The Super Bowl of golf is here, and we got balloons. It's really a lot. Big celebration on Up and Adams. The Masters is underway. Our good friend and UConn alum, who will probably be insufferable today, still talking about it. Darius Butler will be us. And we've got another guest. We're on a roll in our new studio. We have an L.A. Rams Super Bowl champion, Ernest Jones, on the show. Let's go. Oh, look at that music. I could never do, do they just not drink coffee? Just do that? Like there's no way that with an 8 a.m. tea, that means they're on the air broadcasting at six, they can't have any coffee or they'd sound like me because I'm excited about the Masters. And listen, FanDuel is all over it and I'm just around for the journey. And I'll say this, it is hard for this show and me personally not to pull for Jordan Spieth. Great story, character arc, wizard kid, wins young in 2015, then some adversity, some knocks, some hard life, then boom, right back at it. And with the cutest squish alive as his partner. This, oh my God, this is Sammy Spieth. We talked all about him, he was on our show last week and Jordan told us that he would hoist him up like a Stanley Cup if he won and got to put on a green jacket again, which I'm pretty good, my memory serves me, correct? 17 guys have ever won and put on the green jacket at the Masters twice, and he could join that very rare company. It's very similar to it, Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, two ring situation in, in you know, NFL terms. Like, you got to get there and get to, and then you're in rare air. He's so freaking cute. By the way, Jordan Speed has a good shot, and he told us so last week. You know, I'm kind of itching and hungry to have that opportunity again to feel like I can close another one out and um, and kind of, you know, I, I've been working really hard the last few years. I've seen a lot of positive trends in my game, but this is kind of the most complete I've felt in a while. It's nice to feel that kind of confidence and feel like I'm trying to maintain and fine tune things versus trying to find something. And um, scary. it would it would be it would be extremely special. Yeah, um, it would it would be. I, I, I would only wonder what it would feel like compared to the first time. He went into that. We'll have clips on that over at, uh, on our socials at Up and Adam show. What he talked about when he was walking up to that last hole, when he realized, the moment he realized, man, I have this, he talked about his demeanor and his face and not being demonstrative and smirking when he sort of knew he had it in the bag. And he talked about that moment in 2015 where guys just kept coming back. And that's what it is. That's Masters Weekend. We'll see how it works out on Sunday. Spieth tees off this afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern today. And he's considered one of the favorites to take home that jacket, the fourth best odds over at FanDuel if you were having some fun still want to have some fun right now uh the odds are plus 1700 and get this i dug up some exclusive intel for you because i love you on this morning to kick off the masters you're not going to find this anywhere else i asked them who are the top five guys that fanduel sportsbook users the millions of yeah are betting on are having some fun with and here it is the now these guys are the favorites at the top four we got it and then this guy's sort of interesting to me i need to know more about him if you're one of the people who said yeah max homa who had the 14th best odds in the tourney as the fifth most bet on guy to win the tourney this is weird to me this max homa character i've never heard of him so uh let me know about him and then i'll say this uh, lefties, Look, oh, this music is throwing me off. This violin is in my ear, it's very tight. Am I going down with the Titanic today? Sure. Uh, listen, we're always giving the righties lots of love. We gave Steve Aoki some love yesterday. He's a left-handed cake throwing DJ who Gronk loves. They were going back and forth on Twitter, we love it. So I wanted to look up the odds for top lefty finisher in the tournament. Did you know you could bet on that over at FanDuel Sportsbook? Very fun. Brian Harmon is the guy followed by, of course, a favorite Bubba Botson, uh, lefty himself, Phil Mickelson. Oh, I am I allowed to talk about Phil Mickelson? I don't know and Mike Weir as well. So that's what's going on as we go on over to the NFL world in our studio. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> this is, it is like MTV's My Super Sweet Sitwick 16 threw up all over my desk here. I told, I told the staff I don't want any birthday hoopla. If you ever watched me on Good Morning Football, same story, would not like that. And I came in to, um, to this. Are we doing this today? Is this happening on today's program? Is it? All right. We got uh, some people I love in studio. <laughs> One someone <laughs> in particular. But let's get into it, guys. In the NFL world, it's getting weird. Weirder than having 19 things of flowers and balloons when you're sitting by yourself in a studio. Weirder than that in Baltimore, the Ravens. They had their pre-draft press conference yesterday. So John Harbaugh's there. Eric DaCosta is there. Their, their director of player personnel, Joe Hortiz, is there. And media members were reportedly 
told, instructed, questions had to be draft focus, uh, and and the trio would not be taking questions about Lamar Jackson or those negotiate. How weird is this getting? And where when is it going to end? I don't know. I'm going to turn 40 by the time it happens. But listen. It didn't take long for reporters, they're doing their job to say, huh? And it got a little contentious. Take a look. Sure. With respect to the, this being about the draft and everything, just with the Lamar stuff that's going on. Hey guys, are guys, you, are you all that. looking at quarterbacks? Alex, 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 if you can, this is about the draft. Just move off the, the, the question about Let's just, we're, we're, we're not going to answer one more question. About the draft, are you looking at quarterbacks differently because of the situation's going? I've always been a Ravens fan. I like what they do there. They are a blue chip stock in the ecosystem, in the landscape of the things that we do and we love in football. And I understand that it's a sensitive topic. They, I mean, Harbaugh looks exhausted. He looks absolutely miserable about this. But this reporter, Alex Glaze of WJZ in Baltimore, very clearly asking about the draft, what they told and were instructed, ask about the draft and how Lamar's status affects what the team is going to do in said draft. Trying to throw him out because he mentions Lamar's name in his question is so chaotic and not cool, uh, especially since he was asking the most important draft-related question that the Ravens are going to have to face in a few weeks. Baltimore at least has to consider drafting a quarterback in case this thing continues to go spiral and go south. And later on, Eric DaCosta, he seemed to admit Admit as much when he was asked about the possibility of the Ravens grabbing a quarterback in the first round. It depends on the board, Jameson. It really does. I mean, I'd have to say yes because we have uh, quarterbacks in our top 31. So just based on that alone, simple math, I would have to say yes. With each passing day, I really feel like I have uh, less and less of an idea or a clue of how this is going to play out. Uh, very weird behavior all along. Clearly, it is spiral city in Baltimore. Hate to say it, uh, and it, but it was clear. I mean, Raven style, Raven side of it. Every option is on the table right now. Now, I spent a lot of time yesterday giving love to some uh, very incredible defensive prospects in this draft because everybody's talking about the quarterbacks and the Bryce Youngs and the Richardsons and the four. I'm a defense gal this year because they're not getting any love in this draft. And I, Ernest Jones, you hear that? I, you're a linebacker. I like you. That's why we have you on the show today. Ernest Jones, Super Bowl champion, joining us in a little bit. Um, I've been reading the tea leaves a little bit, guys, because sort of combing through the circumstantial evidence, and I'm growing more and more convinced we're going to see a dark horse team move up and snag one of these top quarterbacks, though. Let's get into it. I'm growing more and more convinced that team is the Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders, they currently hold, guys, the seventh overall pick. Remember, they signed Jimmy G. That's a significant deal. He's just as handsome as that beautiful new stadium that they have out there. But everything we're hearing tells me that they are not done. And I'm going to show you guys the evidence. Exhibit A. Ian Rappaport. What up, Ian? Mike Garofolo is reporting that they have scheduled a top 30 visit with Bryce Young. OK, that starts today. Sure. Plenty of teams want to do their due diligence on guys, but let's look at the list of scheduled top 30 visits so far. Here's what you're seeing. Four quarterbacks, three of the consensus top four. They also had a formal meeting with CJ Stroud at the Combine. They're investing a lot of time, a lot of resources into scouting the quarterback spot. We heard them connected to Mac Jones and those trade rumors yesterday. There's obviously a McDaniels, Mac Jones, like a cute little narrative that you can piece together and puzzle together so it makes sense. We also heard Daniel Jeremiah, who to me, he's if I'm looking at who my compass is in this draft world, he is it. He is the North Star. He mentioned that they've been talking to the Cardinals about moving up to three. So these are not the actions of a team that is fully feeling comfy in their quarterback situation as it stands. And if I had to guess who the target is, I'm going to put my money on the Marvel superhero named Anthony Richardson. I've been saying it all along. Go big, big swing, best upside. That's what you want to do when there's so little separation between these guys in this draft. Dave Ziegler, uh, their GM, he went to scout him in person last year. There's some evidence for you. They were one of nine teams to have a formal meeting with him at the Combine. Ziegler and his assistant uh, GM, Champ Kelly, they were at his pro day in person. I heard they took him to dinner. Okay, so I mean, this is a courtship. This is, if this isn't John Cusack with the moonbox outside of their house, I don't know what is. This is, please go out with me, I love you, swipe left, let's go. So it really makes sense too, if you think about it. We've had a number of draft and quarterback gurus like Yogi Roth, he was here in studio on the show. He's been with these kids since they were young. They all are praising Richardson's, ta Richardson's talents. We know he's a bit raw. We don't know if he's a quarterback to start. Chris Collinsworth came on, that's his alma mater. Chris Collinsworth came on my show and he said, I like Richardson. I 
I'd like to see him learn behind someone for a little bit. Some of his skills still need a little bit of developing. If I was to put him in the best situation, let him learn from someone like Patrick Mahomes even did behind Alex Smith all those years. So that's a situation in Vegas where he doesn't have to get out there and play right away. It's not all on his shoulders. And when he does, and if he does, he's got Devontae Adams to freaking throw to. So it's all pretty nice for Richardson in Vegas in that division where they need a high-flying offense uh, and they need to address their defense because they need to score a lot of points to keep up with any of those squads. So... Yeah, take the reins when he's ready. I like this for Richardson. Oh, there's a lot of, you know, circumstantial evidence pointing into the direction. So when the Ravens move, Raiders move up and they snag him. Do not act surprised. I told you, here first. All right, I've had too much coffee, and now I have champagne, and now I have Ernest Jones, who's, listen, I don't, my heels aren't tall enough for this right now because I'm super short. Ernest Jones, did you not bring the Super Bowl ring? Where do you so keep sorry, the Super Bowl ring? In a safe What, I thought you were giving it to me for my birthday. Okay, we'll be back. How are you? Just what the Rams needed. Ernest Jones. Oh my goodness. Gas never hit in the break. I'm gonna win. Intercepted. Ernest Jones. You're gonna get you to my face. Get it, get it, get it. People say winning the Super Bowl is hard. Like, it's not. Especially when you, don't, when you do it as a rookie and have the game of your life while you're doing it. That is our first guest today. He burst on the scene for the Rams, and he helped them take down uh, everyone in the NFL with this insane offense and great defense to win Super Bowl 56. Last season, he finished the year with a total of 114 total tackles. Superstar linebacker Ernest Jones Ooh. is here. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm so good. Now, I was talking about the Masters, pretending I know what I'm talking about, and I don't because I've never watched the Masters or golf at all. But we did have Jordan Spieth on the show. You're a golf guy? I love golf. Tell me. I'm addicted. It's been playing about two, three months now, and I just can't stop playing. Yeah? Who do you, are you playing with, like, teammates? teammates? friends. Yeah, who are you playing golf with? Um, I play with Nick Scott a little bit. Um, and then a lot of guys, I just go out there and play by myself and meet people and just play. How'd you get into that? I was watching Tiger's son play, and I was like, man, I can go out there and do that. And then I went out there, and I couldn't do it. So now I'm just addicted to, like, trying to be better at it. Tell me your master plan here, because you just told me in the break that you might go back to school. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. So when I, when I finish this NFL career, I'm going to go back to school and get on, the, get on the golf team wherever I go back to school at. You want to finish and get a degree. Why Definitely. is that important to you? Just to kind of for my kids, show my kids that that's something that we, we, we strive to do, is just complete college and finish what I started in a sense. Yeah, they said uh, in my ear, what's his handicap? You said you don't have one yet. Not so you're, you're new, you're working on it. Who you got in the master? You, will you watch? Oh, yeah, definitely watching it. Um, I'm leaning towards Roy. I love Roy. I like watching him play, and definitely Tiger, of course. So one of those two, I'll be happy. See, I'm rooting for Jordan Spieth, oh, and I, I got to talk to him a couple of times, So, and I'm learn just learning about him. So he won a green jacket, the Super Bowl of right. golf, mm -hmm. when he was really young, mm -hmm. 2015. He's playing all these studs, all these guys who've been there, done that. He wins so early, and now he's trying to get back. Right. You won a Super Bowl ring your rookie season. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that with him? Like, are you, is there, what's the simpatico vibe there? Because oh, yeah. it has to be, are you good now? You're like, okay, it's in the safety deposit box, mm -hmm. I'm fine, or how do you get back there? I'm not, I'm not good, I'm itching, I'm itching. Each, each Super Bowl, especially watching the one last year, knowing those guys and what they feel, I, I just know I wanna get back to it, and I'm ready to get back to it, ready to get back to winning. I don't know what to make of the Rams. What do I make of the Rams? I don't know. <sighs> Y'all went from the top, to the bottom, now I don't know what's going on. What do I make of these Rams? We got a lot of young, hungry dogs that are going to be on this team this year. I'm excited. Um, I think a lot of people are going to count us out, but if I know those guys that are in that locker room, we're going to ball. We're going to be back where we need to be. Um, now, you and Bobby Wagner, I'm sure, had a friendship. Now he's back up to Seattle. Right. No offense, where he belongs. Right. Where he belongs <laughs> to finish his Hall of Fame career. He's right. one of my favorite players ever to play the game. What has he taught you personally, whether it's on the field or off the field? Everything, especially off the field, is just you know the investment side of and the finance side and just taking care of your money. But on the field, just watching him and how he goes about his day, goes about his work ethic. I thought I was working hard, but he truly showed me that you know that I got to pick it up too. So learned a lot, and I'm excited about this year. Excited for him and his his journey back to Seattle. It's your third year, but all those OGs, the Whitwer, they all they all left. OBJ, even they all left. So is this you now? Are you oh, yeah. the you're the leader? I'm leading it now. I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to do my thing this year. I'm excited. Who else is a leader in the locker room? Got Jordan, Jordan Fuller, um, Aaron Donald as well, and can't forget about old Glock 9. I call him Matthew Stafford. So I'm excited about him getting getting back out there. I'm ready to see him slinging around. What's Aaron Donald like in a locker room? 
he's a dog, but honestly, he's a big kid. Like, really? He is the biggest kid you ever get around. Like, always wants to joke, just, and he always wants to win at the end of the day, too, so. He's such a character and such a, a dominant player, but when I think of him, I just see him with the shirt off celebrating at the Super That's the only image I have of that. <laughs> and when he, remember that footage came out that he was like practicing with rubber knives oh, yeah. as part of his training? Definitely. What do you think of when you hear the name Aaron Donald? The, the greatest football player of all time, like he is. And just seeing him, just watching him and how he goes about his day, it's, it, it lives up to the hype. He's the greatest for me. The greatest of all time. The greatest. There's a couple guys. Okay, you sure about yeah, that? I'm sure about it. Okay, sounds good. All right, let's uh, talk about what you've been doing internationally because I think this is very cool. I'm all about growing the game. I, international games, I'd love to be part of that series at the NFL. Right. Uh, and you took a recent trip to Mexico, right, mm -hmm. with your teammate. You and Quentin Lake went down right. there, caused all sorts of trouble. You guys were where? Monterey? Monterey. How yes. did it go? It was amazing. Like that, the the Mexico fans, they love the Rams. I um, think we got the most fans out there. They were absolutely excited to see us. We got to go to a few of the soccer games and support some of the some of the players that were coming from UCLA. So it was great. What Fun was the time. most rewarding part of that? I'm um, connecting with the fans. Um, just truly seeing the impact that we have on the fans there, and then going to the camps and the kids really look up to us. They know of us, and they were just excited. Uh, and the fun didn't stop when you got back to LA. I saw that you were at WrestleMania. Who wasn't? I was the only person not at WrestleMania. Oh, that was exciting. Uh, tell me, everyone, I had friends, I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. I had friends who work in hair and makeup, friends who have never been to a football game, but they found themselves somehow at WrestleMania and they said, I'm never not coming back. Oh, man. They were obsessed because of the energy. I had people on our staff go, why should I go to WrestleMania? Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's like, it's, you get the, that get to be a child again. Like everyone there, nobody's being judgmental of, oh, you're screaming for wrestlers and it's kind of acting a little bit. No, everybody was having a blast and just being able to live out that childhood dream of watching WrestleMania and being able to be there and be a part of it was, yeah. it was everything. Now when a division rival is out oh, there, yeah. George Kittle, gets his number called right. and Mac if you're doing were you rooting for him secretly or were you like boo, boo. really that's were you boo. really screaming that for sure that's not for nice for sure it's yeah. San Fran it's, it's it's just the way it goes what if they called you and said Ernest we want you to be in the next Smackdown I'm there really I'm give there. me your person what is the persona of Ernest Jones I'd probably be the 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 villain in a sense I'd, pro I'd probably be the guy there um just making all the fans boo me in a sense. I, I always looked up to those guys for some reason, so that that would be me. So what if they said, okay, you can do it, but you have to take on Aaron Donald? I got him. <laughs> You're take him down. <laughs> take him down. You might lose, though. Uh, no. Not losing. We, uh, what would your finishing move be called? That's what the control room wants to know. They're in my ear. They, they love talking about wrestling. It'd be either a 619 or, or a good swanton bomb, one what, of those. Okay, you got, now you got to show me what that is. What's a 619? It's you, know, Ray Mysterio kind of gets you on the rope and then he kind of wraps around and kicks you in the face. Okay, I was going to say, do you want to try it? But that does not sound that fun. That wouldn't be fun. What's hard. the second one? I jump off the top rope and just do a front flip Okay, so you. get up on here and I I'm up there. <laughs> and let's see how that goes. We are, they're yelling at me, no, we can't do that. Of course we can't do that. Okay, we're going to go and talk about the Super Bowl here because mm -hmm. let's go down memory lane. I don't know why you don't wear that ring everywhere you go. L.A. L.A. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad answer. Okay, you were a rookie, but your performance was that of a veteran superstar. Three quarterback hits, two tackles for loss, but this sack you had. I want you to look right over there and take me through this play. We got, we got it. And she's saying, where is it? Oh, we're looking for, there we go. Go for it. We got a blitz call right here for me and Joe Mixon. We were, we were battling all day right there, and I knew he was going to come up and cut me at one point in time. And, there he is, he cut me, and I kind of fought off that block, and Burrow had nowhere to go. It was either me or Aaron Donald, and I'm sure he, he, he'd want to choose me at the time. Yeah, now I was rooting for the Bengals in this Ooh. game. I was sitting right there. I had about <laughs> seven cocktails in my hand, and I was on, at the cabana seats just watching y'all destroy oh, yeah. this team. And then OBJ went down, and I go, okay, we got this. Mm. I got this. I and, mm -mm. Uh, OBJ was... He was the leader of that game right there, especially offensively. He was doing his thing. Before yeah, but then he, he went out, and right. then I thought, okay, now we got this, and it just couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. What what switch flip for you in that game? Um, I just think for us, it was always going to be a defensive battle. Whatever defense came out and played the best that game, that was going to be who won. So defensively, we were all just talking that week before, especially with Vaughn. Vaughn was a tremendous leader 
And it was just talking about us and just making sure that we knew, like, the game was on us. We stopped them. We do what I, we were supposed to do. Our offense is going to get rolling at some point. And that's what happened. Tell me more about Vaughn as a leader. Because he obviously, the big ticket price, right. 126 mil for five years up in Buffalo, couldn't quite help them this season get there. Right. But how crucial was he? Without him, you're not winning that Super Bowl? We're not. I always said he was the reason why we won, in a sense. He came in there, and the way he showed us what it took to be a, a champion, even putting the Super Bowl trophy in the locker room and just having us every day look, write notes on it, those little things like that just made us, like, okay, we got to get this. He called it football heaven, and we wanted to feel, see what it felt like. I don't know that story. He brought a Super Bowl. Yes, he had his Super Bowl trophy. When his he won, trophy? Uh -huh, when like he won the Lombardi him. trophy? Like the, a... the Lombardi from Denver, and he would put it in there in the locker room, and every day he'd have a different note on it. Like, do you want this? Do you want to be in football heaven? Stuff like that. So I think he truly just transcended the way that we thought about it. It was just different. It's yeah. different when he got there. So you, you, do you think he got you guys to manifest your Super Bowl? Definitely. It sounds like that. What, what, I want to know what these notes said. F the, football heaven. Football heaven. Do you really want it? Um, man, what were some other, other ones? Hmm. Can't ca quite think of them, but they were all just inspirational, just trying to get us to know, like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and you got to go cash in when you get a chance. It's not promised that you'll get back there. He's what, did, been, what did he say to you before the game, to the, to the team? Just, just be us. Mm. Be us. Once we got to the game, he knew, like, if it was up to him, he was going to do everything in his power to get another MVP and just make sure we rode off into the sunset. Like, he was just, he knew that we would come out on top. I don't know that he, I really don't know that he did that. Is that a known story? I don't know that he brought the, the Lombardi trophy in that locker room. Yeah. I think more, more, like, lots of people like to focus on his chickens, and they like to focus oh, yeah. on his glasses, and they like to focus <laughs> on what he's wearing, but that's a tr that, that takes, he doesn't have to do that. Not at all. That's amazing. It's great. Man, Bills. They got a good one. They got sure. a good one, a for great sure. One, definitely. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm making of this team this year in I, that division. Y'all are all over the place. The, the division's tough. It's always been tough, though. San Fran's always doing their thing, and the addition of Christian McCaffrey just made it even, you know, harder, but... I know those guys in that locker room. We were, we are ready. Yeah. Do you think this? You know, they're saying Brock in San Francisco. I never look. At, I covered the media, and I'm like, who's start? Who's your quarterback? Mm -hmm. They put Jimmy Garoppolo to the Raiders. We know that. Now they got Brock Purdy. They got Trey Lance. Right. They signed Sam Darnold. They're saying it's Purdy. Is that the right? I mean, in your opinion is that surprising to you? Not at all. I think Purdy Purdy does his thing. He he puts the ball where it needs to be. And the and the guys in the locker room, you can tell they feed off of him. Trey Lance hasn't had the opportunity mm -hmm. to kind of show what he's about. So. I think it'll be a good, good position battle. All right, you're a fan of Brock Purdy. We'll see that. We talked about Bobby Wagner. What else do you want to talk about? What else is going on? You're going to be a golfer. You're going to go oh, back yeah. to school. What else you got going on for the rest of the summer? Just golf, golf and uh, <laughs> football. That's it. That's my life right now. What What is your? Let's manifest something for you. Let's put it. Let's get. Let's bring in the green jacket. Right. We'll put post-it notes on it. What like What do you want as your goal for golf? You want to play it on a professional level, level like Danny Woodhead's trying to do? That would be nice. That would be great <laughs> yeah. if I can get to that point. But I honestly, I honestly think if I keep working towards it, it it's going to be I, – I, I actually can be pretty good. I'm not bad, like, for playing for two, three months. I'm not bad at all. All right, I want you to leave me with this. What is your leadership style? Because it's crazy to think about how many veterans were on that, right. that Super Bowl team, let alone that were on the team last year, mm -hmm. and now you're the guy. What is your style going to be like? I always, I always kind of compare it to Ray Lewis. It's like those that that vocal leadership, but also when I get out on the field, it's just my my persona. It, I click. I switch into a different guy, and I'm just. It's just. Well, now you need to dance. It's crazy. Though. You're a great Lewis. I'm learning I, the I, dance. I, you are. I'm learning. What's the dance? His dance. His dance. Oh you yeah. Wanna, you gotta show me. Mm, Ernest, you can't be scared. Rough this is right my. Now. What do you mean? Show me. I wanna do it with you. What Let's is do it? it? Show me. I can't get the middle part. What? It, I don't even remember what it is. So we gotta. Whenever I see it, it's scary. But you know what? I think the Ravens need this. Y'all have so many problems in Baltimore. This is gonna manifest some good ones for you. Give me, give me some. So we're gonna slide to the left. Uh, okay. Yes, I forgot about slide that. Slide to the right. <laughs> yes. That's and what... then it's one here. And then it's, ugh, Okay, let's try it one more one. time. Let's come let's over go, here. Let's go. go for it. Mm, mm. <laughs> I like dancing. <laughs> oh, not bad. I go. love it. Ernest Jones here. Bring your Super Bowl ring next Definitely. time. We'll uh, see you at another Super Bowl. Of course. Hopefully sometime Definitely. soon. Just not over my bangles, because I'm surprised. The for I'm sure. glad that we did this. It was like a therapy session to get over that win. Super Bowl 66 champion to 66, maybe. Sean Payton. We have not said that name on this show in a quick minute.
Uh, he might go to the Derby, too. We're manifesting that. He, Ian Rappaport, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, all probably going to be there. And so is our show. We're very excited about that. Um, but Sean Payton might not go to the Derby because he has so much to do. Lots of post-it notes all over his computer because he has a to-do list um, with his new team, the Broncos. I'm sorry. I keep getting people calling me. My mom's calling me in the middle of the show for my birthday. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for watching. Uh, he's got a big task in front of him, inheriting uh, Russell Wilson. What is Russell Wilson coming off the roughest season? of his career with some doubting that his best days are in the rearview mirror. So clearly Coach Payton doesn't believe that he, uh, because he wouldn't have taken the job, of course, but I still wonder what it's going to take to get Russell back on track. And that's why we have Matt Hamilton for another. That intro was way too long, by the way. Hammer time. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. Oh, what is this? I mean, song? you know, talking. What is this stuff? With her mom calling in the middle, and you know, kind of, kind of broke it up a little oh, bit. But I, I have we to can't say, play just hammer before, time anymore. Yeah. Okay, I'm uh, leaving. But before we get into that, I know you're a private person. I know you don't like to make everything, you know, put everything out there and make a big deal out of things. But I would be really remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to uh, to wish a happy birthday to Billy D. Williams Got it. this morning. I was waiting for that. Everybody yes. loves Lando. Yeah. Um, Lando Calrissian. Hello. Superstar. Yeah. 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 You cannot love Lando. So happy birthday, Billy D. We love you um, and we appreciate you so much. You're 86 um, years young. Yeah. Uh, but as for Russell Wilson. Uh, hey, aren't you getting <laughs> married this weekend? <laughs> Yes, yes, I am yeah. on Saturday. Excited. Very Good luck excited. with that. All right, yeah. continue. Thank you. Tell me, listen, um, Sean so Payton, yeah. listen, really quick. We are going to the Derby. I did ask Mr. Sean Payton if he could go to the Derby, but he does have his hands full. I've talked a lot about how he's such a renegade, such like a hard ass kind of a guy, and Russell Wilson is not that. Mm -hmm. So that is a reality show in the making. You might cast them into White Lotus season three in Thailand, uh, mm -hmm. those two together. But when it comes to on the field, what is the key to getting Russ back to the guy that we know he can be, young, durable, and a, a champion? Yeah, so I think when you go back through Russell's career, what's made him so successful and when he's always been at his best is when he has a strong run game, and is able to take shots off of play action. And when you look at the Broncos last year, they were just 19th in run percentage when it came to running the ball, 21st in in run offense. And when there was play action, like defenses really weren't worried about it at all. They weren't threatened by the run game. And Russell, Russell wasn't able to do what he does best. Uh, so when you look at the tape from last year, you'll see the Broncos are in 12 personnel, run heavy set, but they're going to run four verts out of it. No play action here. And watch what happens with the Jaguars linebackers. The ball's, the ball's barely even in Russell's hands, and they are bailing out of the box. They are not worried about the run game at all. What that allows them to do is take away these seams. So Russell's really left with only one option mm -hmm. here, and it's to try to throw that whole shot against cover two, drive that ball in. But there's no threat to the flat here, so the corner, Tyson Campbell, is just going to be able to keep dropping, undercut that ball, and pick it off. It's not great play design, but it's also the product of not really having that run game to threaten a defense. And there's a school of thought that you don't really need to run the ball out or have a strong run game for play action to be effective. I don't buy that at all. I think when you really look at things, having a strong run game really correlates well to play action success. It does, and I want you to check this out because I knew this was coming because I look at the show rundown in the morning. Look at this. Over the course of <laughs> Russell's 10 seasons in Seattle, the two NFC championship wins, the Super Bowl, his three Pro Bowls, his eight playoff appearances. Listen, the Seahawks ran the ball more frequently than any other team in the NFL. This is good stuff here. And as you mentioned, the Broncos, they were 19th in the NFL last year when it came to running the ball. And you know, that you and I have been like, hey, go get Austin Eckler, Eckler, go back home. Like, we're trying yeah. to make because, uh, so the run game. Listen, he sat on our set at Super Bowl, and Josh Jacobs was there, and he was sizing him up and, you know, doing all. So there's there's a lot going on with the run game. What else you got? Yeah, and when you and when you look at how the commitment to the run and play action has benefited Russ in the past, you really see it. Let's look at this next play. Right. Uh, when he was with Seattle in 2017, also happens to be against the Jaguars. And you'll see here, 12 personnel once again, but because they're, they're worried about the run game, the Jaguars have to put eight guys in the box here. And you'll see, once the play fake happens to Chris Carson, they're gonna sneak Doug Baldwin back in that soft spot in the zone, but watch how everyone reacts with that play fake. Everybody's coming up, all eyes are in the backfield, and you'll see that soft spot created that Doug Baldwin's just gonna be able to sneak into there. And then this is where Russell goes to work. He's so precise. 
He's so good picking apart defenses off of these play fakes. Just throws a perfect ball to Baldwin for the touchdown. And to tie all this together, mm-hmm. I want to pull pull up the best play action passers of the next gen stats era. Oh. Spanning Russell's time in Seattle. And you see Russell there at number four. He's as good as it gets. But look who's number one. Drew Brees. And I know he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Well he's done. One of the best to ever do it. But that's also it was also a product of Sean Payton's system and Sean Payton's play design. Uh, he's as good at drawing up things off of play action as there is. And I think it's going to be a perfect pairing in Denver. Damn, was that your best Tamar time? That was good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Plays. You know, I try to bring the best on your birthday. Yeah, you brought you like you brought a full screen that really capped it off really well. And listen, Peyton, he has gone all in to upgrade the offensive line. Mike McGlinchey, Ben Powers. He doesn't need to watch Hammer Time because he understands what the path is when it comes to turning this offense around. Get the run game going and get Russ back to picking teams apart off of play action. That's what he should do. Excellent hammer time by you, even though we, we can't use that. Are, are things are things going downhill here at FanDuel that we can't use the <laughs> hammer, uh, MC Hammer song? Huh? I don't know. Well, I mean, me we'll later. see. We got, we got to talk to Hammer. We got to talk to Hammer. Yeah, you we'll got to see what happens. Sounds good. We'll be back after this on Up and Adams. Where's this guy been? Darius Butler doing push-ups, eating raw eggs out of a blender. Darius Butler joining us. Oh, that's a UConn alum smile if I've ever seen one. We've got lots to talk about. Who's the corner to look at at the draft? We got it next. Hey, Darius Butler, where you been, buddy? Where have you been? Uh, nine-year yeah. NFL veteran, co-host of the Man to Man podcast, our FanDuel family member, and as I understand it, a walking bucket? A, 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 a perfectly said, a walking <laughs> bucket, fresh off of UConn, Natty. But I've been moving around, you know, recitals, uh, soccer game, flag football games. I've been doing it all. But it's your birthday. It's a special day. Oh, God. Happy birthday. Last time I saw it was in AZ, Super Bowl, when you made me take a tequila shot I at did. nine in the morning. I did. What do you have over there to drink? Because I got. Oh wow! I got oh wow, some, Dar- Darius! I got, some, I got some spirits over here. Darius, let me tell you. Shot. What are we doing? What let we me got? tell you. Can I open this? Is that okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Let me tell. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is like the best birthday thing ever, Darius. I'm, be- Hennessy, I'm not man. kidding. Marissa and I in commercial were talking about the Derby, and I go, I th- I'd invite Darius, but he doesn't drink enough. <laughs> That's See, what I said. Time- Time and when I have Time to work, place. yeah, I get eight a.m. Drinking at nine, you know, yeah, it's well, not really it's, the vibe. It's like, eight. It's eight forty. So okay. I do the derby. Uh, your huskies do were the derby. popping bottles. Talk to me about UConn. Ready? Yeah, you know, making us pro- oh, let's do it. Oh, I'm gonna knock out a light. How much do I get if I knock out a light? Twenty points. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Perfect. That was. I literally can't open my eye. I love it. Somebody get her white. Who shoots this up? I'm not in freaking Vegas at a bachelorette party. I literally can't open my eye. Can you tell me about... Tell me about uh, the Yukon <laughs> Huskies and their brilliant NCAA championship win. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Hey, we're, <laughs> hey, we're popping bottles, too, okay? Thanks for joining the celebration. <laughs> but our fifth natty since 1999. Oh yes, God. we're blue blood. Yes, we're the best college basketball program in the nation, men's and women's. Uh, so shout out to my guys, to no-go, Coach Hurley, Hawkins, all of the guys, man, they held it down. They made me proud. Wasn't even close. Oh, my God. But that right there, that can't I can't wait to eyes. see that clip. I can't wait to see that <laughs> clip anyone, right there. I, I'll take a shot for problem? you. Oh, my God. I need, oh, I need the replay. Look, Come all on. all of a sudden, Conrad knows how to produce. He's figured out how I to, to, to play I need the instant replay. <laughs> that guy... <laughs> <laughs> that got great laughs in the studio. I'm so glad. Uh, Good pop. Here we go. God, this is, is this a bad sign. Is this like a bad omen? My God, this has never happened oh, in no. my entire life. 
But at least it's oh, at man. least it's Dom. It's the good stuff. That was great. Hey, you got hey, you got a great you got a great year coming, Kay. You got a is great that, year. Is that right? It can't get a worse. Great year. Can't get worse than this. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, let's talk about other things. Masters. <laughs> now I've seen you on that golf simulator. I have. I see. But, yeah. But wait, wait. Before we even get to that, cheers. You're saying cheers, cheers, happy happy birthday. Oh, you yeah. listen. Here's what I'm going to tell you. We had an Olympic gold medalist on the show yesterday. She's 20 years old. Her name's A Thing Mo. And she's incredible. Oh, she's so she's uh, uh, she's amazing. And she told me mm -hmm. that she writes post-it notes. And we did goals. Here was literally my goal: win a parlay. Win a parlay was my goal. <laughs> now you did this with your NCW. You want people some real money here? Cheers. I did. I did. <laughs> Cheers to that. I'll finish my last little sip. Always love giving an excuse nice. to drink in the morning. Nice Hennessy right there. But yeah, I did. Uh, just had UConn to win. UConn to score 70. Uh, I think they super boosted up to plus 150. Okay. Uh, a lot of people won. So it was good. It was a good way to end the basketball season. I've won a few NBA um, parlays. Uh, the F1 super boost the FanDuel had actually hit. Woo! I didn't put that one out. But um, so, you know, we're, we're trending in the right direction. We'll see what's going on with these masters that just kicked off this morning. Well, but I have been is. golfing. It was $3.5 million. FanDuel had, yeah. like, listen, they love me. <laughs> I don't know how this thing is FanDuel <laughs> and you are going, but FanDuel, listen, I'm keeping the lights on. I'm getting, like, you, they pay out 3.5 mil on this parlay? Hey. Like, you're going to get called to the principal's office. because I, yeah. I know. I, um, might, I might be halfway out the door. But, hey, so we got to enjoy it while we're here. Got to enjoy bottle. it while you got it. You mentioned the Masters in golf. Now, I, I've seen you with McAfee. You have that golf simulator down. But if Darius Butler rolled up to Augusta, what are you shooting? Oh, man. It, nah. That, it, don't even bring me out there. Don't even disrespect that really? course in that way right now. No way. I'm I'm all golf range. I'm taking lessons now. I'll get in a simulator. But my swing isn't even crafted enough to get out there and play and uh, make it look good. But I'm getting there, though. I'm about a month away, and uh, I can maybe I can crack 100. Crack a hundred. Okay, I don't really know if that that sounds that sounds good. Great, crack a hundred. <laughs> that's what it's all about. It's, it's, you know, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, you you know F one also more than yeah. I do. And the next race uh, is coming up. Do you have any early season analysis? We're three races in, right? Max Verstappen. I know he's. Yeah. It, yeah. Go ahead. It, it won't be close this year. It, 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 it's you know Red Bull, Max Verstappen. They built another rocket ship. Um, I don't think it'll be close for the championship goals. Um, now, for all the teams under uh, Red Bull and Max and, and Checo Perez, it's competitive. Aston Martin made a big jump. They signed Fernando Alonso, the old guy. He came over. They made huge improvements to their car. Mercedes, they're figuring it out. They had a great um, showing last race. Uh, and then Ferrari is kind of taking a step back. So uh, there are there is some competition and some excitement when it comes to the races after Red Bull Got and that it. rocket ship that they built out there. That's not fun then. All right, well, anything can happen, I guess. Uh, Taylor Few, True. our social media person who you know, uh, our guru, our manager, she's obsessed with D Danny Ricardo? Yeah. What, where's he at? Yeah. He's Red a reserve Bull? driver. Oh, he's Red Bull. For Red Bull, right? Yeah, but he's a reserve driver now. He uh, he lost his seat last year <gasps> uh, at McLaren. He was a driver for McLaren, lost his seat there. And uh, now he's a reserve driver for Red Bull. And he's hoping to get back in there next year, but he is one of the most popular drivers, uh, especially here in the States. Yes, popular, yes, he's very popular uh, on our show staff. I, 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 I will say that much. And I like that she's rooting for an underdog. I did not know that about her. Okay, let's talk about this Tyreek Hill thing, okay? He was mm -hmm. really chirpy yesterday. This is what he had to say on 810 Sports. Take a listen. Chiefs Kingdom, when the Miami Dolphins come to Arrowhead Stadium this year, guess what we gonna do? Guess what we gonna do? I hate to throw up the peace sign against y'all. I hate to do it. But guess what? I'm going to be y'all worst enemy that day. I'm going to be y'all worst enemy hey, that day. We'll you better change that. the signals. I know every signal y'all got. It's April. <laughs> What do you it's think? too early. It's it's too early for it, but I I love it. You know, this is what he does. Ever since he came down here to Miami, he's just been stirring the pot every time it seems like he picks up a mic. Um, and it's early. And Tyreek, hey, it's been a lot of talk about trash talk 
lately with Andrew Reese and Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to talk trash, back it up. Tyreek has backed it up since he stepped foot on that, on that football mm -hmm. field. And it's your former teammate. I mean, it's your former team. So it, it is going to mean a little more for Tyreek. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Now, it is Patrick Mahomes and the defending Super Bowl champs on the yes. other side. So I'm somewhat worried about that. But we did trade for Jalen Ramsey to shore up that defensive backfield with Xavier Howard. So I like it. I like the trash talk. I love it, actually. It's true. You know, and it's funny that peace sign he's talking about the Usain Bolt. Somehow that isn't on Twitter for trending and nobody has opinions on oh. that. It's just looking at, looked at as good competitive uh, confidence in oneself. It's so interesting yeah. how that happens. Quickly, before we let you go, what is the, uh, t talk to me about the Chiefs DB chain right now with that. The Chiefs DB, I didn't see that. I no, I'm saying like, Chiefs. you're, give me oh, what the no. corners are, are they, are they texting each other, tweeting each other, or are they just enjoying their off season? They don't care. Yeah, it's, it's April, who knows? Yeah. They're probably in Cancun, Costa Rica, somewhere right now. They, they, they don't care what Tyreek Hill is saying on 810 Sports right now on April 6th. Probably tune, tune into the Masters right now, uh, actually. But uh, they're not saying anything. But right. when Tyreek Hill shows up, you better believe it's going to be a full game plan that's going to be a little different than every other week when the cheetah's out there. I'm going to choose to end this interview by saying that I, we had, we have a bucket of champagne in our studio waiting for the day I win a parlay. And we were going to have a champagne shower. We had goggles, like MLB, World, World Series champ vibes, a tarp, but, and it didn't happen all year. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> I champagne showered myself. It's been waiting. It's been waiting. That's a good omen. See, that's a good omen. I just don't think this I can be, I can't, waiting. don't think this can be on the internet. I can't, we can't put this on the internet. We cannot put this on the internet. That's all I'm going to say. Ask Love you, you, Darius. Thank you Ask for coming you. on my birthday. Love you too, Kate. Bye. Happy birthday. This cannot be on the internet. This will be on the Back here in Up and Adams Variety reporting the White Lotus season three will be set in Thailand. Interesting. It'll be good. R.I.P. Tanya McCoy. She would have loved Thailand. She could have come back as a ghost. I could see that. She could come back. You know what? I think they should take all the characters from season season one and the, some of the characters from season two, which I like the characters less, and put them all into season three. Minus Jennifer Coolidge. But you take like, um, what's her name? Connie Britton? Yeah. Gorgeous, great storyline. Loved her as a character. Bad, badass CEO. Take her and her and her, you know, weird kid. They could reunite with the son who went away on the canoe. I know, he could you be know? driving, dr dr driving the canoe you to know. Thailand. Wouldn't that be amazing? Okay, I don't know where I'm looking. There it is. Hi. Uh, there's not quite a release date for season. Do you like the champagne on my face? It's something new I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Some people take peptides and HGH when they turn my age, but I'm doing Dom Perignon. All right. Uh, Listen, there's no cast for this thing, so we thought we'd have a little fun. It's draft season. Who better to create that than Armand's biggest fan, uh, Hamilton? Get in here. I thought that Marissa was doing this whole bit. Hey, what's, what's going on? I'm ready. I'm ready to draft my team. Right, We've Marissa, been talking about this. You've been throwing smoke screens at me. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Well, let's let's take a look at this. And Marissa, why don't you just take it away? Because I don't really quite know. Go for it. Hello. So we have uh, White Lotus season three. You guys are gonna pick. One at a time, you're gonna get your draft picks. These are just some suggestions Dumois. that we came up with, some wild ones, some Dumois, Mario Lopez, Lil Dicky. You Vince put Giselle Vaughn. right in the middle there. Is there a reason for that? Are you trying to make things awkward for me up here on a, <laughs> no. on a Thursday? All right, Jane Fonda. Tom and Jerry, interesting choice, interesting choice. We've definitely got some interesting ones. You Lil wanna... Dicky's in a new commercial. Yeah, you want some variety. Fan. Huge Eagles fan. Met him at Benny Blanco's really. house once. No joke. True story. <laughs> okay. But we're going to start. Kay, you're going to get the first pick. Oh, this is a speed draft. So it can go of off of the big board or just from the old cranium. Okay, I'm going to say the first person I want to add, and I want to get his name right. What is the... It's Greg. Cousin Greg. No. Not Cousin Greg from oh. Succession. No. Not Nicholas Braun. What is the guy's name? I had this. I, I texted you guys this this morning. The guy's name... from Greg from White Lotus, season one and two. Tanya's husband. John oh. Grease. Yes, we, we love sure of him. I no, do not think oh, so. Oh, I texted you guys that this morning. I'm taking John. I don't know or Greg. John Grease because and you know who I'm talking about. Hamilton. He needs to come and face yeah. the music. He k gets Tanya killed. Gets her murdered. She's shooting people coming out of the bathroom on a boat. I was on a boat in Miami. You know how yeah. hard it is to do that. And then she kills herself walking over the thing. He needs to face the music and he needs to be in Thailand. So that's your first pick. That's a great. Yeah, a back set of Buddhism and beautiful yeah. things in the Grand Palace. We need him to die in season three. <laughs> Greg. That's Are a great you... call. I'm 100% I'm on board with that. Uh, my first pick. Champagne. 
<laughs> Tremendous actress, and I need to take her away. For, make sure she doesn't get on your team. Julia Louis Dreyfus. <gasps> Respect. That's a dick. That's rude. It's my birthday. That's her girl. <laughs> I'm trying I know. To... And now she's on my team. God. Oh my so we'd love to see her. Me. Love to see her in season three. I'm sorting through the hundreds of birthday texts I have. I'm wishing my birthday to try to find this train from this morning. I just can't find it because I'm too popular and loved. <laughs> oh gosh. I think um, I do remember your second okay, one. Okay. No, no, no. My second. Now I have um, on my queue the ghost of Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because. I just know if this goes on Twitter and it's between you and me was the better team, Jennifer Coolidge will win. Absolutely. I could, that's my that's a good draft strategy. Fan favorites in there because nobody's gonna. I have Paul Giamatti on my list. <laughs> that's good. Too. Okay, no, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. You know who I want? I'm gonna go Brian Cox as Logan Roy on his retirement trip crossover HBO Family in Thailand. You are thinking Trying ahead. Eat, pray, love his way out of being a scoundrel. There we go, Logan, uh, Brian Cox. I love that. Hamilton, up to you. Wow, it's a great call. Um, well, we know, you know, we saw uh, Michael Imperioli make his crossover. He was so known for one HBO show as Christopher Moltisanti. Uh, I want to do the same thing with another character. Give me the Hound, Rory oh. McCann. The Hound. I want him running the hotel. Mm. I want him in the Armand front desk role, just being miserable and and amazing. I just we like, need it. You know what? I really think, and I'm going to put this down. And I like that choice. Danny DeVito is going to be in the season. It's rumored. It's rumored he's going to be in it. And, yeah. and I feel like Mike White likes reinvigorating characters. So like that's sure. why. So I was thinking even like, gosh, I don't know who to pick. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, I'm going to go. Stanley Tucci. That's, That's a it. phenomenal pick. That's a good Stanley call. Tucci should have. I mean, it's a value here in the third round right. of this draft. To be honest, he's got the versatility. He's <laughs> beloved. He's underappreciated. So I'm gonna go Stanley Tucci in Thailand, and I'll watch. What do you got? You got 30 seconds. Give me, give me Bill Burr just being miserable on vacation. You have a miserable we need lineup. It. No He's one. Be there, will be, there will be no fun. No, there will be my no lineup fun is great. This. Oh, I need somebody be who's a who's Bill a little who's a little like lighthearted. Who should, I, uh, should okay? Should I go um, Tom Brady or should I go Laura Dern? Tom Brady, Laura Dern, or Christopher Walken? Christopher Walken. Control room. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. Uh, absolutely riding a bicycle around the streets of Thailand. Give me right, hammer, go. Christopher. Give me Lizzo. <laughs> I'm taking Lizzo. <laughs> okay, one more K, one more K. I can't believe you took six Julia. seconds. I never made it back from Julia Louis Dreyfus. I'll go uh, Travis Kelsey. Oh, Hammer, what? God, a pick. I thought we were gonna draft Richard next. Take everybody I love.